Time now for our Wall Street Week Daily segment. The host of Wall Street Week, David Weston, joining us as he does every day at this time. And last time I spoke to you, David, was on Friday. We were heading into a weekend where everybody was watching that OPEC Plus meeting and expecting the potential for a surprise. Yeah, exactly. And there was something of a surprise, wasn't there, yeah. in a practical matter. It's possibly big news for oil. And when it comes to oil, there's one person we always turn to is Dan Jurgen, S&P Global Vice Chairman and author of The New Map, Energy, Climate, and the Clash of Nations. So, Dan, welcome. There was a surprise, particularly because they made a decision, but it looked to me like mainly Saudi Arabia was making a decision and leaving the other ones behind, you let them off the hook. Why did they do this, and why did Saudi Arabia go on its own? I think that it could it really couldn't put, pull together a coalition or an agreement what to do. And I think Saudi Arabia sees itself now as a central bank of oil, uh, and that it's, uh, as the oil minister said, uh, the petroleum minister, uh, they would do anything to stabilize the market. So they thought a million barrel a day cut in July would be a bridge to the second half of the year when the general expectation is that the fundamentals in the market will tighten. And so this was to prevent the price from slipping further. So, Dan, you understand this so well. I don't. If they thought it was going to tighten the second half of the year anyway, why does one month of an increase or a cut in production, I should say, from Saudi Arabia make that big a difference? I think because the demand uh, has not been what people thought. There's been disappointment over China, glumness about Europe, and uncertainty about the United States. And so uh, it, they don't want to get in a situation where the price slides further and you have a tougher time climbing out of it. Uh, the petroleum and his energy minister is very experienced. He's seen that before. So this unilateral cut is to show, well, they're going to keep the market stable and then look to the second quarter, second half of the year for a better market. Uh, Dan, I am curious as to how much of an accurate read we're getting right now on the supply picture. There's been a big focus, obviously, on what Saudi Arabia is doing and the other sort of major producers. But Russia is still the elephant in the room, and there's still a lot of distortion as to exactly what they're producing and, more importantly, where it's being sold. Well, certainly, uh, Russia, uh, the big uncertainty is Russian production. And uh, it has not come down as they said it would. And that's, uh, you know, the, one of the issues left on the table is, well, what is Russia's quota under uh, OPEC uh, plus? But at this point, ru the game Russia's playing is what's good for Russia's war effort, and that's to get as much oil out and get revenues, even though those revenues are less than they would otherwise be because of the price cap uh, that uh, the West has put on uh, Russian oil. Uh, they are certainly doing everything they can to get around it. And what a rearrangement of the oil market. Uh, two years ago, India brought no oil from Russia. Today, it vies with China as the largest buyer of Russian oil. Yeah. Two years ago, Europe was the largest buyer. It's, it's buying hardly anything. Do, do you have any sense here of what the relationship is right now between the Saudis and the Russians, particularly when it comes to the energy space? I think it's somewhat uh, frayed uh, because uh, different focuses. I mean, originally OPEC Plus was really a, a Saudi Russian led uh, organization. It's now really a Saudi led organization. And Russia is there, but it's. Uh, kind of standing aside. So I think they, they both have an interest in trying to maintain OPEC plus, but I think Russia's uh, eyes are elsewhere right now. Dan, do you think Saudi Arabia is disappointed today in the reaction of the markets? Because initially, at least, it was a fairly modest reaction, actually. Yeah, I think, you know, it's, it went up and, you know, it went up and then it's come down. The Saudi minister described it as a lollipop to the market. But, you know, we're now in June and this is a cut that will take place in July. So, in fact, it's it will affect expectations, but it doesn't go into effect. But I think they would have looked for something stronger because that's a pretty strong statement for Saudi Arabia to say, we're unilaterally going to cut production by a million barrels a day. Dan, it oversimplified. To some extent, we've watched a, a duet here between shale back in the United States and what Saudi Arabia is doing. What will be the reaction in the United States production? I know we now have some, some new permitting provisions, right? Right. Uh, new permitting provisions and certainly you know, one of the less uh, focused on areas of the uh, debt uh, ceiling bill was some uh, improvement on this pandemic, uh, this permitting pandemic that we have in the United States, not being able to get things permitted. But I think we're seeing that uh, that the shale is not growing as much as would have been thought a few months ago. I think there's still caution uh, uh, and the kind of weakness, relative weakness you've seen in the market. So people are holding back. And the shale producers are still very focused on returning money to investors, which is their new social contract, which they need to do uh, to maintain their uh, position in the financial markets. So you're not getting that big boost that you would get 
uh, that you might have expected. It may change later in the year if we do see oil prices in the high 80s, if the fundamentals really come to together in the way people generally expect them to do right now. But so much, uh, you know, really hinges on the global economy, and in particular, uh, that the fact that China, the rebound that out of China is not like what we got after 2008. It's not been, uh, uh, you know, a, a barn burner as people thought coming out of COVID. Were you surprised by that, Dan? I think so, somewhat, yeah, I think somewhat surprised by it because you thought oh, there's pent up demand, pent up energy, uh, you know, human energy, people want to get back to work, but it's just, uh, it's, it's not as strong. And, you know, you'll see some things that are very positive, like amount of jet travel in China. Yeah. Uh, but on the other hand, you look at manufacturing, it is kind of lackluster. Do you think that what the Biden administration did in the past with regards to the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, something that, of course, they're now trying to sort of fill back up, did that actually have a meaningful impact, not only on prices, but more importantly, on some of the decisions that OPEC Plus has been making? Well, I certainly had an impact on prices. This was unprecedented in terms of the size. And I think that the uh, OPEC Plus was watching it very carefully and continuing uh, to watch it. And, uh, you know, it was really about... Uh, it was real concern about price. And remember, that began, the first release was be, three months before the Ukraine war, uh, when a lot of, you know, there was a lot of focus on actually what was going to happen to gasoline prices in the, uh, uh, going into the uh, 2022 midterm elections. So, so, Dan, as we've talked about, Saudi Arabia is making a calculation there to try to support the oil price for the time being to get to the second half of the year. Right now, it looks like that was not necessarily a good deal. If you look at how many fewer barrels are producing compared to the move on the price, where does Saudi Arabia need the price to get to to make this a good deal for them? Well, you know, it always gets cited, you know, these days that the price they need is around $80. Uh, you know, I've seen over the years, whatever the stated price that they need, varies with where the price is at any given time. But certainly, uh, they have very ambitious economic uh, program under uh, Vision 2030, spending a lot of money, and, and they need revenues. And so when, you, when uh, Saudi Arabia act as a central bank of oil, it's trying to take a longer midterm, not a long term, a midterm uh, effort to assure that the kingdom has the revenues that it needs for its programs. And uh, it does not want to... Prices below $80 are very disturbing to it.